Uh, hey guys, how's it going? Uh, so I'm Aaron Wall and uh, I founded Homeboy Bar last December. Um, we're all about modern Irish hospitality and I suppose what does that mean? It's modern Irish hospitality. We give our customers that warm and welcoming service uh, of an Irish bar paired with the great product knowledge and skill of some of the best bars in the world. Um, that's our sort of unique angle to what we are and what we do. Um, who are we? Uh, Myself and my business partner, Kieran Smith. Uh, both of us born in Dublin, uh, are Dublin boys, um, but homeboy we created in London. I suppose just to get to where the name came from, uh, all through my career I was told if I do the business for, for someone they'll help me open, open a bar. Uh, I work, came over to London to work for London Cocktail Club, helped them grow from five bars to ten bars. And uh, the guys had told me that not long after getting there. And, and they, they, they lived up to their promise. The owner of, of London Cocktail Club used to always say to me, I need to open a bar in Dublin, because I'm such a homeboy, I'm always talking about home. I thought, well, that's a great name for a bar. Um, <clears throat> my background is uh, working in some of the world's best bars. So before I opened up Homeboy, I used to run Clue Clay in Shoreditch. Uh, in my time there, we won top four uh, best, or we're nominated in the top four best high volume cocktail bars in the world, at Tales of the Cocktail. Uh, prior to that, Clue had won everything from best menu in the world, the best high volume bar. Um, prior to that, I was the training and development manager for London Cocktail Club Group, um, an amazing group of bars uh, that are truly high volume speed bartending and great party bars. Um, we, got, uh, Clu uh, we got London Cocktail Club nominated top 10 best high volume cocktail bars back in 2017. Uh, my business partner, uh, I suppose, is, is the luxury. It's where, where he comes into it. Uh, my business partner, Kieran Smith, uh, has a background of five star hotels. So from uh, before we opened the bar, he was in the Dorchester in London um, in, the, in the events department. Prior to that, he was uh, head of the beverage in the Waldorf Astoria in, uh, in their event, uh, events department. Prior to that, he was a bartender uh, back in Dublin, in, uh, in, in, the, in uh, Dublin's equivalent, I suppose, of the Shelburne Hotel or the Waldorf Astoria in, in uh, or sorry, Dublin's equivalent of the Shelburne Hotel, which is kind of uh, Dublin's equivalent of the Savoy Hotel or something like that. Uh, and, that's, and that's where we met. Uh, we always had a similar view on bars and service and what we should bring to the consumer. And we always had the opinion that, uh, are you five star? Or are you luxury? Uh, because of how you act with your customer or how you make your customer feel. Uh, and the both of us believe it's always has to be how you make your customer feel. So in terms of, of, of branding, and, and you guys touched on this with, the, with, with their products earlier, uh, we, we think it's, it's obviously really important. Uh, our branding, we wanted to have a strong brand name that was displayed clearly. It was easy to understand, easy to pronounce, uh, and, and had a ring to it. Um, the image, the Irish Terrier. Uh, Irish Terrier denotes uh, loyal, lo loyalty, warmth, tenacity, uh, and, and it's Irish. Um, they used to use the Irish Terrier in World War One and Two to go between um, to go between uh, the, the trenches because it was fearless, and uh, and it liked the sound of its own voice. Don't like me. Um, <laughs> the, the meaning, uh, a logo uh, that can be can be relevant to all: homeboy, friendship, positive tribalism, uh, home, and uh, and who doesn't love a, love a cute dog? We wanted a homeboy has many different connotations. Uh, the first of which was uh, used in, in, in Ireland to talk about uh, kids that were from orphanages. And then that came into America and got uh, spread around how, I suppose most people know the word homeboy today. But we wanted to, we wanted to use the dog to, uh, not just to know their Irishness, but to make a house a home, really, I suppose. Um, this gives us opportunities in future that we haven't even touched on yet to develop our brand. Uh, a dog as, 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 as a character, it's a dog's life, a hair of the dog that bit you, um, a dog's eye view on the world. You know, um, we, we love that opportunity. Um, the product, we're very clear on what we are. Um, and it's a great point to Guinness. Uh, simple, delicious food. Um, we're dog friendly. But a point, Boilermaker is something that's a big point, a part of what we're trying to push, a, a, a beer and a shot. Um, cocktails. Um, Irish coffee, you know, we're not just, we don't want to be an Irish bar just because we say we're an Irish bar. We want to have tangible uh, relationships with everything that we're doing. So we say we've got the best point of Guinness in London. Um, we, we think we do the best cocktails with Irish whiskey. 
and we think we do the best Irish coffee in the world. Um, and hopefully we'll be launching a product soon that I need to talk to you about uh, to help our Irish coffee along. Um, our drinks. Uh, we focus on cocktails as a way of giving our guests a bespoke experience, tailoring, uh, tailoring it to them. Uh, Irish whiskey cocktails, uh, like, like they haven't been seen before, are classics in, in their best light and, and uh, new contemporary drinks. Um, our whole thing with this is Irish whiskey, uh, as, as you said earlier, was once the top selling spirit in the world. Uh, we're using that as a platform to talk, to have a voice, uh, and to have a voice that's Irish. Um, it was a top selling spirit in the world before because it's so um, versatile. Uh, for us, when we look at cocktails now, we look at Irish whiskey, we can talk about, we think there's a different Irish whiskey for a different category of cocktails. So there's certain Irish whiskeys that have higher notes, namely things like Paddy or Bushmills, and they go great in drinks that you might have typically think were good for gin. There's Irish whiskeys that, uh, like Teeling Small Batch, uh, goes great in drinks you might have typically thought go well with, uh, with, with, with light rums. Uh, there's whiskies like McConnell's that is a little bit more robust, can stand up to more robust flavors, but won't overpower and won't disappear, that go well against tropical flavors, Coca-Cola, all these things, bitters, you know, strong, heavy flavors. Uh, there's, there's Irish whiskies like um, Slane, or Irish whiskies that have been finished in virgin oak cask that have more vanillins that kind of can do, may need a modifier, but kind of can do what a bourbon can do in drinks. And then there's uh, peated Irish whiskies like Connemara that can do what Scotch can do in drinks. There's an Irish whiskey for everything, even like the Dead Rabbit in New York, they launched their whiskey, and it's to me an Irish whiskey for an American market. It kind of sits in, and when you're making cocktails with it, it sits in what you do with rye whiskies. Um, so we want to be able to have that chat, but we want to, we didn't want to just go with Irish whiskey. We want to be able to have that chat in the middle of uh, things that customers are familiar with. So we have a big focus on delicious classics. We don't have 12 stirred down drinks in the menu because when you're on a night out, if you're drinking martinis or Manhattans, you're having two. We want people to stay all night and drink all night and have a good time. So we've got classics like, you know, we've taken a twist on a Paloma, uh, an East Eight Hold, which is a, a really popular classic in, in, in London. So we've taken drinks like this that we try and that we we try and make customers feel comfortable with, that they can feel comfortable reading the rest of the menu. Um, since we've opened, because we've had a clear message, because we've been very clear about our brand, who we are, the quality in that, um, the positive tribalism, the connection with customers, uh, the connection with with our culture and, and who we are, uh, it's been very easy for consumer to understand who we are, for uh, brands to understand who we are, for media to understand who we are, and that's led to us getting, getting recognized. Um, so this is some of the online uh, stuff that we've got, which has been fantastic. Everything from Time Out London, Hot Dinner, Square Meal. Um, this is, uh, yes, yeah, some more stuff. Uh, Evening Standard London, Lonely Planet, The Irish Times, that was a big one for me. Um, uh, and then some of the print media from Time Out, Class Magazine, uh, Bar Magazine, you know, that, all, all these things lead to helping us tell our story. And, you know, people mightn't see an Irish bar as luxury, um, but us creating that bespoke experience with our cocktails and our service and make, making sure we've got a great point of Guinness and delicious food uh, helps to elevate that idea of an Irish bar into, into a luxury space. Our cocktails might be a little bit more expensive than a normal bar, but people are happy to pay it because they're having a good, a good time. Their perception of value is higher. So um, on the back of, of all of that, we've, we've uh, won a few, or we've won and got nominated for a few awards. We won uh, Design My Nights, uh, best, best cocktail bar in North London. Um, we got nominated as uh, number 11 at uh, the top 50 uh, cocktail bars in the UK. And uh, just recently got um, nominated top four best new international cocktail bars at Tales of the Cocktail. Uh, something that I suppose we're, we're, we're really, really proud of. Um, so, so, so why I'm up here is you've heard it from the, the importer's perspective. You've heard it from the brand perspective. Hearing it from the, the bartender, bar owner's perspective of what it's like when someone's coming in to have that conversation with you. Uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to be probably a bit blunt with it, 
no one cares about your granddad's fucking bike. Um, you want to come in and talk to me about your product, start off with how good your liquid is, and then tell me the story. You only get across that line if your liquid's good. As you, as you said earlier, um, the li if, if people have a bad experience with the liquid, then they're not going to come back. And we believe that in the same way, same as the bar. We're not trying to create, and, and price points and all that, we're not trying to create a million new customers. We're trying to create a thousand new customers that come back all the time. Um, so find your story in your liquid. Start off with why your liquid's great um, and, and, and what, what it works in. I think for a lot of uh, new brands, a lot of brands in incubation periods, um, for me, I, I, I'm kind of, I'm sick of brands being on the fence. Uh, in London at the moment, there's probably a new gin coming into you every, every second day to launch their new gin with you. And they don't know what to do with it. And they, they, they pawn it back onto you and go, no, no, we want you to figure out what you want to do with, with this gin. And, well, get, off the, get off the fence, man, I'm busy. You tell me what your gin's better in. Right, like, what's the best version of a simple serve? Like, is your gin and tonic better with an orange slice than a lime slice, or is it still great with lime? That's cool if it is. Make it simple and easy for me to understand. Uh, moving on from that, I always say, come up with a cocktail that can be made in every bar in the world that your product is synonymous with. You can make your product synonymous with. And then after that, it's talking about dealing with the, with the premium bars and creating aspirational serves. Now, for me, some of these aspira aspirational serves like you see in bars like Night Jar or the Artesian, they're never going to be recreated in, other bar, in, in all the bars around the world. But people will associate the brand being used in that drink in a very creative, interesting way and want to do that themselves, want to be involved in that. And that's it for me. When someone comes in, I want to talk about what's in the bottle and then why that's better than what's on my back bar. Or even, not even that it's better, just where it sits in between what's on my back bar. Like, gin's a great example of it. We started, we opened the bar, we said we we're gonna have six gins. Last count, it was 17 gins. People just came and gave us gin that we didn't want. Sat in the bar, it's, it's grand. House, uh, house blend gin martini, awesome. Um, painting that picture, I suppose, that's, that's the big one for, for us as a bar, but for, for the brand as well. So just what I was saying there, Paint that picture, why your product's great, what it's good in, uh, understanding it. There's cert certain companies that come to us and they have all that ready to go and you're like, oh cool, so that gives me a little bit of guidance of how I can talk to customers with it, how I can use it in drinks, how I can uh, approach it myself, how I wanna drink it, and then le learn it from there. Um, yeah, so if you're painting that clear picture for your customer, everyone's gonna get it. Uh, and if you can paint it, if the brand gets it from, from day one, they can pass it down to, to the bars, the bars can pass it down to the bartenders, the bartenders can pass it on to customers. To me, that's probably, that, for me, that's the best way to, to, go, to go forward and to create that luxury beyond price point. If you can build that connection, and that connection for me has to come uh, quality of product first, story seconds, and support after that. So uh, that's my chat. Thanks very much.